This video is brought to you by our Patreon backers. Sign up now to support the channel and get exclusive early access to videos, live events and the chance to vote on video topics. The link's down below. With winter just around the corner, in any normal year, many of us would be turning to the thermostat and switching the heating on. Maybe not so much this year, however, because Europe, and, well, the rest of the world, is in the midst of an energy crisis with widespread gas shortages. Things haven't been helped by the fact that Gazprom, Russia's national energy company, is currently sending less gas to the rest of Europe than usual, and some politicians and analysts have suggested that Putin might be withholding gas to pressure Europe into signing off on the controversial Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is currently awaiting regulatory approval. In this video, we'll try to find out whether Putin is really blackmailing Europe, and why the energy crisis is about way more than just energy. So, we're going to separate this video into three parts. First, we're going to have a look at the evidence for the claim that Russia is blackmailing Europe. Second, we're going to have a look at Russia's response. And third, we're going to talk about why, even if Putin is weaponizing the current gas crisis, Europe sort of had it coming. There are basically four pieces of evidence that suggest that Putin is blackmailing Europe. Number one, gas flows are lower than usual. Number two, statements from certain Russian politicians have said as much. Number three, Russia has a history of weaponizing gas flows for political leverage. And four, there's an obvious incentive. Let's start with the gas flows. There are four delivery routes for Russian flows of natural gas to Europe. The existing Nord Stream 1 pipeline under the Baltic Sea connecting Russia and Germany. The Yamal Europe pipeline connecting Russia and Germany, this time via Belarus. Deliveries via the Turkish Stream and transit through Ukraine all of which collectively amount to 120 billion cubic metres, or BCM, in 2019, 43% of Europe's gas imports. However, whilst flows through the first two pipelines remain relatively constant in supply, the last delivery route, through Ukraine, has seen supplies fall off a cliff. In January to August 2019, Russian flows to Europe via Ukraine totaled 53.2 billion cubic metres of natural gas, or BCM. In January to August this year, that figure was less than half at 26.1 BCM. Now, according to the Oxford Institute for Energy Studies, some 7.7 BCM was redirected through the Turkish stream, but this still leaves a shortfall of 19.4 BCM, representing a drop of about 17% for all Russian gas imports compared to 2019. To put this in context, in the first quarter of this year, EU gas demand stood at 141.8 BCM, meaning Russia's shortfall represented about 14% of Europe's gas needs. The second piece of evidence comes from statements that Russian politicians have made. While Putin himself denies the charges, Russia's ambassador to the EU, Vladimir Chizov, suggested that Europe might see more gas if it stopped treating Russia like a geopolitical adversary. Russia's Deputy Prime Minister, Alexander Novak, was more explicit, suggesting that competition of certification and the fastest clearance for Nord Stream 2 would cool off Europe's gas crisis. The third piece of evidence is Russia's history of using gas as a political weapon. On the 1st of January 2006, after a major dispute between Russia and Ukraine over pricing, Gazprom, Russia's state-run energy company, cut off Ukraine's gas supply in its entirety. At the time, Russia accused Ukraine of stealing gas supplies destined for the EU. In any case, cutting off Ukraine had huge knock-on impacts with gas not flowing at all through some transit routes to Europe. Hungary lost 40% of its gas imports, Poland some 14%, and France between 25 and 30%. On the 4th of January, just three days after Gazprom shut off Ukraine supplies, an agreement was reached and normality restored, until 2009 when a similar story ensued. On the 1st of January 2009, Gazprom switched off its supplies to Ukraine, due to, yet again, a major disagreement on pricing. This time, nominally, supplies to Europe continued. By the 3rd of January, however, Romania, Hungary, Poland and Bulgaria all reported significant drops in pressure in their gas pipelines. Romania alone experienced a 30% drop in supply. On the 6th of January, deliveries to Europe began to drastically scale back before completely halting the next day. Deliveries of gas to Europe would not resume for another 13 days, with it taking a further two days for flows to return to normal levels. 
You get the point. While Russia might insist otherwise, it does seem that they've used energy for political leverage in the past. The fourth and final piece of evidence is Russia has an obvious incentive here. Russia wants approval of Nord Stream 2 for two reasons. First, it means they can make more money selling gas to Europe, and second, it makes Europe even more dependent than it clearly already is on Russian gas for its energy supplies, gifting the Kremlin a fair bit of geopolitical leverage. So, on to the second bit of this video, the Russian response. Predictably, Russia deny the charges. Gazprom claim they're fulfilling their contractual obligations, which, to be fair, is true, and insist that the reason they haven't been able to meet Europe's increased demand is because domestic supplies in Russia are low, and they take priority. Putin called the accusations nonsense and politically motivated blather, before insisting on Wednesday that, quote, if they ask us to increase further, we are ready to increase further. The sentiment was echoed by Russia's ambassador to the UK in an interview to the BBC over the weekend, where he said that Russia would come to the rescue if Europe needs them. Unfortunately for Europe, however, these promises didn't materialise. On Monday, there were capacity auctions for November, which is basically when suppliers say how much gas they can supply that month. There were no increases in Russian supplies to the EU, which spiked EU gas prices another 18%. So, that's the Russian response. They've promised to come to the rescue, and, well, they haven't. On to the third part of this video, why Europe sort of had this coming. Even if Putin is blackmailing Europe, to blame Russia for the current crisis in Europe completely misses the point. This crisis is mostly a consequence of policy decisions made in Europe. Europe's inability to compete on the liquefied natural gas market and its decision to move towards short-term contracts that are more susceptible to price volatility are a couple of examples, but more fundamentally, in investing massively in solar and wind with no plan for a renewable baseload energy source, Europe was always going to be exposed to fluctuations in the natural gas market. Furthermore, Europe chose to be reliant on Russian gas. Russia is Europe's largest provider of natural gas, supplying some 43% of the entire bloc's energy demands, and this figure is only expected to increase when Nord Stream 2 comes online. When Europe, and especially Merkel's Germany, were lobbying for Nord Stream 2, politicians and analysts were constantly warning that being heavily dependent on Russia for energy would leave them open to blackmail and undermine Europe's energy security. They went ahead with it anyway, and, well, fair enough, maybe it was the right call at the time, but then you can't get too upset when the thing that everybody said was going to happen then happens. So, what do you think? Is Putin actually blackmailing Europe? Should Europe approve Nord Stream 2, or would that just further undermine Europe's energy independence? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to get even more involved, then you can back us on Patreon, which gets you a whole load more perks from exclusive live streams to early access to videos, behind the scenes posts, and the ability to choose our video topics. The link to the Patreon's down below, and thanks for your support because we literally couldn't do it without you. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we post a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of the videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's down below.